a podcast to honor the gods. This better come with a sacrifice. Dave X Media. Galloping gargoyles. <laughs> As Marietta raised her head, Fudge leapt backward in shock, nearly landing himself in the fire. He cursed and stamped on the hem of his cloak, which had started to smoke, and Marietta gave a wail and pulled the neck of her robes right up to her eyes, but not before the whole room had seen that her face was horribly disfigured by a series of close-set purple pustules that had spread across her nose and cheeks to form the word sneak. Welcome to the Restricted Section, a Harry Potter podcast where me and my friends get on Zoom even though we live close to each other and be like, burp, 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 Harry Potter, burp, 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 etc. If you haven't done the reading, don't worry, we did it for you. Here's what we're talking about this week. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Chapter 27, The Centaur and the Sneak. This chapter features... Firenze's first divination lesson and Marietta's first narking. Thanks to her. Thanks, Marietta. Umbridge crashes a DA meeting and snags Harry. There's a showdown between Dumbledore and Fudge, and Dumbledore is forced to evaporate into thin air, presumably to avoid getting arrested. Welcome to the restricted section. You cannot deny we've got style. I'm your host, Christina. My co-host today is my main informant, Grace. Say hello to the listeners, Grace. It's me. Hello, listeners. <laughs> I said, because uh, in, my, in my brain, I, I, you said, it's me. And I was thinking about Mario because we're playing It's Mario a me, Party. a Mario. It's a me, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> Grace and I played, well, Grace, you didn't play, I but you could have. Very skillfully. Lot, you did. Nobody ever has watched Mario Party that closely, <laughs> but we played for Brooke's birthday. We played Mario Party for like five hours. It was, it was actually fun. super fun, just as an observer, objectively. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. I'm very excited because our special guest today is Ethan Edgehill from Bacon and Eggs. Say hello to the listeners, Hello, Ethan. it's me, Ethan Edgehill, Mario Party <laughs> enthusiast. Who do you play as? I am usually a shy guy main. Mm, mm-hmm. I like those fours. It always feels it feels good to me. But I am I am team. I need more maps. Nintendo, please give me more maps any day now. What kind of? Oh, you mean like for, the for maps for Mario for Party. Mario Party? Yeah, I not just maps in general. I Nintendo, like, please <laughs> please send me maps of New York State from the American <laughs> Drafting Company. You're from, writing but, to Nintendo's cartographer. Yeah, <laughs> chief cartographer at Nintendo, <laughs> send me all of the maps that you have. <laughs> So I play with Princess Peach because I have female lead energy. You of course. Have to yes, that. bitch. <laughs> and my favorite color is pink. And in Mario, uh, in Super Smash, her main move is that she hoists her butt in your direction. And I just <laughs> vibe with that. <laughs> she goes, hey, yeah. And she butt blasts you. Have you okay. played uh, Mario Super Strikers? No, I haven't played that. Is that a baseball game? It is the soccer game. Like Mario oh, Soccer. Oh, Strikers. Uh, strikers. It's and all coming together. <laughs> it it really gets you um it lets each of the characters have a personality oh. in the way that they don't in maybe something like Mario Party or Mario Kart. Wait, that's really cute, really? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um but I can if there's so there's a, th- a move in the game where you can like do like a super goal thing and it like is guaranteed to go in if you hit the buttons right and then Peach is definitely just like she she just bats it in with her butt. Nice. <laughs> just a good old booty bump. Hell yeah. It's great. I love that for her. If you like soccer and also Mario, it's literally the best game you could ever buy. I like at least 75% of those things. I'll give it a try. <laughs> it's a Mario game, so it's going to be expensive forever. If you don't actually like it, don't buy it. But Fair enough. I feel like I like every Mario game. That's fair. Like Nintendo just makes good games, and I have fun no matter what. There's an inherent quality associated for sure. Yeah. Well, and also they, I feel like they aim, they're like, it doesn't have to be all that. It's, we're just doing, we're just doing a fun little Mario game well, here. Don't even worry about so it. So the thing, not to tangent too far, but the, I'll say this very quickly. <laughs> yeah, the thing about Mario Super Strikers podcast, is yeah. the, the normal difficulty mode is very easy. Like any, any, your average baby could do it. Your average child uh, can do it. I am like an experienced video game soccer player. I played FIFA for a long time. 
I go on the hard mode of Mario Super Strikers. I get my teeth kicked in. Wow. Oh my gosh. Like they go from like, oh, this is a <laughs> this is a Mario game. This is for children to you wanna you wanna play soccer? Which, <laughs> how, about you, how about you die instead? Cool. That's fun. <laughs> Let's talk about one of my top five chapters in all of the Harold Potter series. <laughs> Wait, first. Grace, I need to know who you play Mario Party with. Oh, this is okay, nice. I will say I've never played Mario Party in my life. What about like Super Smash? I've maybe? played Super Smash, Mario Kart. and I am always Pikachu. Oh, nice! That's cute for you. Yeah, so helpful, so polite, so adorable. He's <laughs> he's he's a great Smash character. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, so you what did you say? This was your. This is may, maybe my favorite, favorite chapter. One of, one of my Wait, top in this five. book or no, in like, all of in, them on the whole series. Wow! It just because okay. it's it it spawns one of my favorite scenes in the in, in all of the movies. Yeah, fair enough. Which is where we get to see Albus Dumbledore clap mm -hmm. and disappear oh, yeah. with the phoenix over his head. It's extremely traumatic, and it just the like is some top tier Albus Dumbledore shit mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's getting tweeted. That's exactly right. But like, it, it is the it is the perfect culmination of like you have Harry, the beloved like tutor to these children. Like that's my fa one of my favorite iterations of Harry is I run the DA Harry. He's he, at his yeah, best for sure. For sure. He's at his Destiny. best. He channels his inner Marauder, especially his inner Lupin, so much. Mm -hmm. And so you get to see a little bit of that, but also like that whole thing has its its dramatic climax there's a lot of stuff that goes on in this chapter yeah yeah i remember reading stuff like this in these books as a kid and being like this is really cool yeah i'm having a good time right <laughs> having now. a mm -hmm. good this is a fun book experience yeah, yeah exactly so yeah. much of the rest of this book i've not been feeling that but, way yeah i mean it, it gave us the 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 line that dumbledore says of uh what, what is the i you're you seem to be laboring under the delusion that i'm going to what was the phrase come quietly yes <laughs> Wait, okay, save it. Wait, we'll get there. We'll get okay. there. Okay, we're gonna go do it. We're gonna go do it. Okay, so this chapter, this is chapter seven of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, the centaur and the sneak. Is it like centaur or is it like centaur? I um, say centaur, but that's probably wrong. Who was it that just did those commercials where they, they made the motor that was half man, half motorcycle? What could be better than being a motor? <laughs> the guy that played the motor in that movie or in that commercial just had such a great way of being like, I'm a motor. It's pronounced motor. That made me want to pronounce it like centaur. So you have to okay, say it. I see. Like that the whole the time. Centaur yeah, the centaur and the sneak. Do you think Byron really talks like that? Tantor Audio presents <laughs> the centaur Wait, and the sneak. Do you want to read some audio books for us? Yes. That's very excellent. That could be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to commit to. I mean, I abs first of all, absolutely, that is like yes. a lifelong goal of mine. That's Second, cool. though, I don't know if I can do that voice for like twenty hours. No, we would like, never want you to. Yeah. And also, we have next to notebooks written by masculine voices. But when we do, we'll hit you up. Perfect. As soon as you need a guy that can that can do that, that can say centaur. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your man. <laughs> Guys, we're doing this. We're getting to the chapter. Yeah. Okay. What day is it? I don't know. It's some random day. We start on some random day. They're talking about Firenze, the new divination teacher. Remember the last chapter? The new mm -hmm. hot divination teacher. It's oh, very, yeah, it's hot. very hot, important hot, hot, hot. that you know that the Patel twins think that he's just dreamy. He's very hot. Wait, I but you it. guys, Parvati is literally curling her eyelashes <laughs> with her wand. That's what, do you think she's using heat? <laughs> I always, I don't I always know. took it to be curling her eyelashes around her wand. <laughs> How long are her like eyelashes? She was, like, right, yeah, like she's making ringlets out of them. Damn. No, no. I'm I, jealous. <laughs> I forbid that imagery. <laughs> <laughs> but Is like, her wand like particularly thin? Like I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eyelashes just do kind of like the the one curl. The Sorry, one guys, I, dri I drift away from my microphone, the stoner I get, because I'm like, <laughs> they <laughs> don't. <laughs> they, see, so we have no access to this information because uh, Pottermore, or whatever it's called, does not provide information on wand. Yeah, there's a G word I'm hesitating Girth. to use here. Yeah, that one. <laughs> I'm just Googling it on the off chance that someone has drawn this <laughs> because there's a lot of Harry Potter fan art. Fan art out there. Absolutely. I with the amount of things I've seen Ginny Weasley do with her wand, uh, 
they got to have something with <laughs> Parvati Patil. I think it's mostly just people named Parvati doing eyelash things on YouTube when okay. you Google well, that particular that's... combination of words. <laughs> it's useful, too. It does immediately strike me as like a Venn diagram that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Divination now takes place in classroom 11 on the main floor. The teacher has hooves. Have you heard of them? <laughs> he can't go up a ladder. <laughs> he can't climb up a ladder. And it's Aww. also not absurd that they made kids climb up a ladder to go to class in the first place. <laughs> Thanks, but no thanks being like all my friends standing directly underneath me as my ass just disappears into the <laughs> ceiling. Like, no, thank you. And, you and, and canonically in the books, you have to wear ropes. That's yeah, true. Them, them girls are wearing skirts for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. In a ropes. In a ropes attire all around. Except for those durable ass non-slip shoes. They wear in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> <They're so awful. laughs> okay. It's like the classroom's like a forest. Oh, my God. How lovely is this? It's my dream. Honestly. I mean, I don't want to. I don't have to maintain it, but I want to be able to hang out there. Yeah, yeah, the sentence where they describe what the room looks like is just wonderful. Like you, you, you you're transported there immediately. Mm -hmm. You know what? Yeah. You, you know what moss feels like. You think you know what moss on like concrete would feel like? I'm just imagining the subfloor is still under there. <laughs> but like, <laughs> so much moss make it so cushy. So cushy. Do you think there's a spell protecting the flooring underneath the dirt? <laughs> I have often wondered what being like a magic contractor is like in this universe. <laughs> Ooh, wait, I'm writing that down. I'm recording a bonus episode soon about the careers in this stupid world that this woman has created. Well, so <laughs> this is I'm adding that this is the fucking thing, right? Is that like we know canonically we know the name of the guy that put plumbing in Hogwarts. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I remember his first name, but he's, he's, he's yeah, Marvel Logan's great oh. grandfather or whatever. Yeah. Wait, I remember learning some bullshit trivia about this very specific. And character. he, he got the bid because he wanted to hide the chamber of secrets. Mm -hmm. So like, he's a fucking wizard plumber. He's a wizard. plumber That, that was the lowest bidder on the Hogwarts job. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to know mm. everything about that guy. Well, the way that this is presented, the way that, that like literally like Harry's world is presented. And like, I do maintain that for sure. He's an extremely unreliable narrator and he misses a lot of stuff in his mm -hmm. narration, which thank God, because what if he didn't miss those things in these books were twice as long? Oh my God. Or a quarter as long. <laughs> he never seems to notice anyone other than Filch ever doing any work on any part of the castle and he that man does not have magic my dude like yeah. that cannot that be right be, that cannot be right. be right somebody's got to do it well I mean the house elves are doing the maintenance surely hmm oh oh my god Dobby with a little tool belt <laughs> <laughs> well because like house elf magic is crazy like they can just snap hmm. and make anything happen right yeah, I guess yeah you're right. that's true so assumingly there's a whole different workforce of of house elves wearing you know differently colored contractor tablecloths or whatever elves. contractor house elves okay that keep I, they going. all have to wear like orange or yellow fluorescent yeah absolutely pillow cases so that they can be safe on the job site off, safety off first course. does a hard hat count as clothes <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay i buy that i see sometimes we could just figure out problems yeah sometimes there's no answer so when they all walk into divination, Ferenc is like, hey, Harry, what's up? And all the other people are like, oh, my God, you know, the sexy centaur Ooh. teacher. Hey, it's the one <laughs> student I've met. <laughs> what's up, dude? It's been four years. <laughs> remember me? <laughs> you remember me? I'm Ferenzi. I'm the one that got kicked in the fucking chest or whatever. Yeah, there's a hoof shape. It's a bruise on his chest. Hoof. It's like you say that one time in one day, and, and it's like enough. And then you say hoof again, and it's like, what hoof is too that? Much. <laughs> what is happening? That word's wrong, what, surely. What? Yeah, that is one of the weirdest words. <laughs> Firenz has been cast out of his herd, banished from the forest for accepting this job, and ostensibly he got beat up over it. Yikes. He got the pow pow. <laughs> yeah, the centaurs seem like they suck. Like... It feels real clicky. Yeah. It's very toxic masculinity. Yeah. yeah. See any women. Yeah. 
Just beating each other up. True. Dick swinging. <laughs> <laughs> like super literally. No, Haley made it very clear in our last episode that the, the dick would not be swinging because horses put their penises away when they're not using yep. them. <laughs> wow, how polite of them. Yep. <laughs> Human men don't do that. Their dicks are always there. Who was I talking to recently? Unbelievably. About... Hold on, I was just having a conversation about which half the Minotaur's wang comes from. Oh, no. <laughs> is, it, is it man wang or bull wang? Oh, my God. <laughs> Why oh was I God. talking about this? I don't remember. It must be, <sighs> I must have been playing D&D and it came up. I feel like he would have a giant violent bull wang. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, where does this? Where does the Minotaur all, stop? It, it just reflects his conception, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay, anyway, this is going great. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, and th- he is, like, a banished. And so, like, we don't get any more backstory on this, really. But, like, what was happening, he knew he would get banished, probably. Like, they're, because they are, as you said, Grace, extremely clicky. Mm-hmm. Like, he knew that he knew that they wouldn't take his accepting a job well. So do you think things were, like, not going well for him before that? Yeah, I we mean, he's done a, a few, like, rebellious things in the past. This mm-hmm. isn't out of character for him. Like when he let Harry like ride on his back or whatever. Yeah, I still don't feel like he needed to do that. It's like I'll just walk with you and protect you. <laughs> He's like, no, no. It. <laughs> right, so right you on. gotta you gotta it's all about consequences, right? We have to see characters making decisions that cause consequences. Yeah. yeah. Right that's the that. problem with fiction. <laughs> well, that's the problem with writing one million characters is it, that they're all doing things and you're right that they all have to get consequences <laughs> all the time. Okay, so they do the lesson. There's like um some dope stars and he's like, your stupid human teacher is just a human. So she, that sweet divination baby, she has no idea what divination is pretty much. Yeah. It almost feels like this is written in direct, as a direct comment to like, I don't know, maybe some sort of group of people that, uh, I, I don't know this for sure, but it almost feels like like the writer pissed off some sort of like Wiccans or something mm. in some way, some sort of like, like witchy folk. Mm. And this is her just trying to be like, see, I can write characters that, that know things too. Like I'm not just a stupid white person. Like, Ooh, I mean what you are very right that in today's day and age, you look at anything in Harry Potter too long and it seems backhanded or performative in some way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This one has always felt like they could easily, we all knew Trelawney was full of shit, right? Like we've yeah. always known that Trelawney is full of shit. Like she's made, she made prophecies that worked that came true. But like mm-hmm. for the most part, she's just lying. Like mm-hmm. she's she's seeing something in nothing. Like we don't need to know because like none of this stuff ever really comes up again. Like Forenze doesn't make any predictions about anything. You know, you're right yeah, about that. He this doesn't. is just something that happens in this. It's book. just like a weird like aside to like dunk on Professor Trelawney for some reason. I think he's, like, <laughs> dunking on humans in general, which, like, I kind of get because I sure. do feel like there's, like, a... I don't know. I mean, like, does this... Humans are awful? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, is there an element of, like, appropriation happening? Like, you know? Interesting. Uh, yeah. I mean, almost certainly because mm-hmm. there always is. Like, there there very often is. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't I don't know. I'm not qualified to speak on like what belief system would be being appropriated here. Like that is not my area of expertise. Yeah, same. <laughs> is anything to do with uh, I think really generally we've had um we've had my friend Fauna from Cats Tea and Witchcraft podcast on the show before and we talked about how kind of like every element of magic is like a like a caricature of something real that like real practicing. Oh, okay, yeah. Witches are like Sure like Wiccans they like do this stuff but like not in like such a drum like exaggerated way sure. you know what I mean yeah so anyway um go listen to those episodes if you want to hear more about the appropriation of witchcraft in Harry For sure. <laughs> okay at the end of class Firenze Firenze Grace what do you think oh I, I always I always say Firenze Firenze I hear you doing Firenze though Ethan and that's got some jazz to it 
That's some audiobook stuff. <laughs> I had this friend in elementary school who he had to come in when, when we were all reading the books together, right? As they came out, he had to come in every day with some new bullshit pronunciation for something in Harry Potter, right? He tried to say it was Hermie one. He tried to say Hermie one. <laughs> he tried to say it was Hagrid. <laughs> he tried to say it was Cyrus Black. Like he, it was always like something stupid. And this, this man could never decide what the name of this centaur was ever. Oh. And so I, that just always sticks in my head every time he comes up, which is not frequently because <laughs> he's barely a character in the series, but needed yeah, a whole chapter, really whole is. half a chapter about <laughs> his divination class that they, that he gets to teach for two more years, at least. Mm -hmm. In the first book, he's a deus ex machina. And then in this book, he's merely a distraction <laughs> from the very complex and long plot that we're trying to right. sort through right now. Right. Because like in um, this this is the one, this book has always amazed me with this. This is the one where the timing doesn't matter at all, and Dolores Umbridge is just a side plot. Like, she's yeah. she's, she's easily the, the best villain. villain in the whole story. She's my favorite. I love her dearly. But, like, she is a mini-boss. Like, she is a yeah. side quest. Um, because there's nothing tying Voldemort to attacking the Ministry of Magic at the end of the school year. Like, he didn't need a weapon. He just needed to convince Harry to go to the Ministry of Magic. That was it. Yeah. Like, there's nothing tying Voldemort to, to June in this story. So they had, so she literally had to come up with the, this horrible, awful woman to distract us for 800 pages. <laughs> and you know what? Kind of worked. Because I hate that bitch. Kind of worked. It super yeah. works. Yeah, it super works. Varenz has a message for Hagrid. Okay, his attempt is not working. He would do better <laughs> to abandon it. Okay. All right. Uh, that's probably nothing. <laughs> not ominous at all. March blurs into a squally April, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. Transition, the that, transition. The way the seasons do, yeah. I mean, you you gotta. You gotta. They're not the, they're not the best sentences, but you simply must show time passing yeah. in, a, in, a, in a realistic way in the books you write, for the love of God. We Please can't all be that. that one scene in the Twilight movies. <laughs> Which one? Oh, with the circling and the money. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's literally, classic. Literally That's one of my top 20 classic. shots ever. Yeah, it's really good. I, with, when Kate and I were watching those movies together, I was like, up until that point, I was like, man, this is kind of stupid. Like, this is, this is not great acting. And they, that shot happened, and I was just like, this is cinema. I will ride for these movies. <laughs> the theater. Yeah. That's how, that's how you show time passing. Uh, oh, my God. A, squ a squally April. Okay, Harry's like, guess what? He's worried about a lot of things. We're worried about Hagrid. Hagrid is not going to abandon his attempt, whatever nope, that no. is. He's not. And everyone is extremely stressed about owls. Tell me more about the hallway and the owls. Oh, my God. Like, tell me it's more never ending. about what is happening in the forest. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sick. I'm reading a slow paced book in my personal life right now, and also this book is so slow paced. So I'm like, yeah, and I'm actually doing a really slow paced edit for a while, like, as no! well. And I'm like, why is <laughs> something must end? I swear to God. <laughs> it's just, cool. I'm almost done. Just with that give me some plot anywhere. <laughs> the editor I'm working on is luckily a good book, yes. unlike Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's important to mention. It is a good book. <laughs> Real, real quick, can I ask a question? What? So, is this your least favorite of the Harold Potter books? Um, I think it's important context that they're all my least favorite right now. Sure. I, except for the two that I haven't read yet, which still holds some mystery to me. But all of the ones I've looked at really closely, not good. I don't like them. Wait, hold on. You've never read them? No, I've read them. Oh, okay. But this excruciating practice of this podcast that I started three years ago, mm -hmm. um. You just look too closely and you're like, well, this one's bad. Let's try the next gotcha. one. And it's like, this one's not working either. Yeah. Okay, let's try the next one. It's like, oh, God, this one's worse than the last one. It's twice as long. What are we doing? Yep. As I age into it, this one absolutely becomes my favorite. Like, wow. Good for you. I'm a kind of not surprised really by that. I really love this one. Yeah. yeah. I always liked it as a book. I hated the movie. Mm -hmm. The movie is has a really weird energy. It yeah, does, but I've... I've come to really appreciate that energy in the series. Mm. Okay. Honestly. Well, good for you. Like, it's, it's, it's like, it's the Guardians of the Galaxy of the Harry Potter movies. Wow. That is, I really, really don't like Guardians of the Galaxy. 
at all. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my. I'm. I have never. I don't like. It's it. not my favorite. I don't love it, but it it provided so much to the series in in like a sense of like levity and like fun that was just completely missing for the first you know fifteen movies or whatever. But anyway, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking about Marvel, right? The Marvel. Yeah. Movies. The Marvel. Okay. Movies. Yes, I'm yeah. with you. I'm following. So like this one, the movie was fun. This book is not fun for for half a second, but the movie yeah. is fun. Yeah. I think oh. that this book has a lot of very fun and interesting elements inside of it. Like yeah. there's a lot of things that happen. Like the end of this chapter we mentioned is like, that's like a really fun thing that happens. Yeah. But there's fun things going on in this book. I just think it's like taking way too long and we're taking way too many detours to get there. Mm-hmm. And I also kind of think that the sixth movie, despite the ending has like more fun bits than oh, the fifth that movie. one's definitely when Daniel Radcliffe becomes like an adult actor. I Absolutely. Like yeah, he's one. so cute. I'm nope. excited to cover the next book. I don't remember any of it. Yeah, I've never seen the um the video of Half Blood Prince, but cut to be the trailer of a teen romance. Yeah, that's so <laughs> yeah. fun. Like I've shared that a comedy. couple times on the show, but I'll do it again now because that's just fun to watch every once in a while. I happen to be his girlfriend. I happen to be his friend. These girls, they're gonna kill me, Harry. <laughs> Like I watch that video like once a month. <laughs> it's very, it's uplifting. It just works way too well. Like there's no reason, yeah, for that to like. It's oh man, but yeah, time time passes. Things happen. Classes are taken. Mm-hmm. Hagrid's not giving up on his experiment. His his attempt. Dude, I I can't believe I can't believe we still haven't had the Grop chapter, and I like still have to do it. Like I don't care I about the side plot. I, I don't care about Grop. F- fucking hate Grop. It's worse on the reread for sure because it's Ugh. like it's like really being dragged out, and you already yes. know what there's, it is. There's two whole chapters of this book devoted exclusively to Grop, and that's a grand total of probably like fifty pages because oh they're God. really long chapters. Yeah, and we just don't didn't have to do it. Yeah, this probably makes me I, I, I'm sure I have not done the digging here. This probably makes me uh, like a racist in some way. I cannot stand the giant stories just in general. Like, mm. I just yeah, like, every I time mean, it comes up, I'm like, this feels so weird. Like it's written it's weird. so weird and it comes out of nowhere. It has like these poor savages energy. But oh, like yeah. the point of the book is like we treat everyone the same, but then it's like, well, look at these violent centaurs and look at these like, like wild giants. So like the book is, is like so do it being like, do as I say, not as I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then like, yeah, Hagrid getting his shit rocked by the giants takes way too long. Like it's just, it and Grop is, I, I cannot stand Grop. There's just like not enough payoff. Like if he had come mm-hmm. back, I'll beat up with a story and an alliance. Like that would have been cool and fun, right? you know? And like like information about his mom, maybe like come back with Grop as like a, a reason, like any reason, <laughs> any yeah. reason. It does feel very unsatisfying. Uh, Grop. Okay, so the only thing, the only thing that Harry... Is looks forward to anymore. He said this before. Is the fucking DA meetings. Speaking of DA meetings, you're in one. <laughs> they have started working on Patronuses. That's the whole story of the meeting. Yeah, uh, Lavender thinks right. Lavender, that's like I could a, a blogger. That would be terrifying. <laughs> he's like, shut up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he grabs her by the collar. He's like, do you know how many times I had to fight that fucking moment? <laughs> do you know how many times? There's not uh, enough chocolate in the world. <laughs> and he can do accents, Christina. We've got to get him for an audio book. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can do accents. I can do it like a Patrick Warburton. Um, <laughs> those are my those are my talents. I can mm-hmm. I if if summoned correctly, I can do a pretty decent Pete Davidson. Oh. But I don't I'm not gonna do that one on command yet. I haven't I haven't finished it. I mean, keep working on it. It's like um what is it, Blue Steel, or is it the uh, in in Zoolander? Is that the one he's working on the whole movie? Oh yeah. Uh, what is it, Blue Steel? I think it is Blue yeah. Steel, and then yeah. his signature yeah. is some, called something else. Anyway, I love Lavender Brown. By the way, sorry, just a side note before. <laughs> La- you big Lav Lav fan. <laughs> Everything she does, I'm like, yes, bitch, work through it. Figure out who you are. Like, take <laughs> down whatever men you need to along the way. It does not matter. You are going to shine. 
<laughs> she's yeah, like and, and she doesn't spend the entire series being mean to Herm- Hermione until like the sixth book. Mm-hmm. Whereas like the rest of them are just kind of all mean to Hermione constantly. Um, a lot of people are mean to Hermione, yes. But I feel like this is also the book in which Hermione seems like she doesn't care as much what people think about her. Definitely. She's very like she's kind of like above it all. You can tell that she's matured a lot. She's like she's like I'm going to do me. Yeah. I got a reporter in a jar. Well, she like stands up to Harry in this book. She has to stand up to him yeah. a lot. She has and, to stand especially him a lot, in the like... first half of the book. It's like, girl. Oh my god, I forgot she fucking keeps Rita Skeeter in the in the jar. In the jar. Holy yep. shit, I completely forgot yeah. about that. She did that already. <laughs> she she's a Slytherin, if you ask me. Like yeah. that Slytherin behavior. She's not that is. None of them are Gryffindors, right? Like that's the whole thing. Is is my my theory at least is that the only way you get to be a Gryffindor is if you ask the hat for something. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Of like because that ex- you know, Ron Because Harry does it. Harry Harry doesn't want to be in Slytherin. Neville like wants to be brave. Uh, Hermione wants a challenge. Ron wants to be Gryffindor so he can be with his family. Like, I I, I drew a whole thing out one time, and I, I have to find my list. But like, everybody that that got into Gryffindor like wants something. Interesting. Um, hmm. Is it because it's all of our heroes and they need to want something for the story to be compelling? I mean, definitely. <laughs> for, for sure, that's what, like, Gryffindor is the main character house. Like. Main character house. But, okay, but I think some of the most heartfelt stories are told by a Hufflepuffs. Okay, like Avatar The Last Airbender. True. That's a Hufflepuff story. Percy Jackson, Hufflepuff story. True. Teaching you how to be a friend, not how to be a hero. Yep. That's way more important. <laughs> I support okay. you. Hufflepuff. Thank you so much. Okay, Dobby <laughs> runs in. Um and like there's a back like an uncomfortable back and forth where he's like beating himself up and Harry's like you simply must say what you're trying to say to I, me. I'm so stressed right I now. I don't understand. So wait, why is Dobby beating himself up? I think it's like a reflex. No. He's a free because elf. Quote I think, unquote. Well, he works he works for the school yeah. and like at the school Umbridge outranks Harry. Oh. That's how I feel. And so But he's wearing all those hats. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> he has so many hats. <laughs> it's gotta count for something. It's it, he has <laughs> enough hats to prevent him from getting a giving himself a concussion. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> it literally says that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It's Do- bad. right, but like how can you be mad at Dobby though? Like Dobby's <laughs> precious. Dobby's my least favorite character. I feel like you guys have not, opposite opinions really? on everything. It's not his fault. I do not blame him. Okay. It's for him being my least favorite character. I absolutely blame Joanne. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't think this is a well executed way to write such an oppressed <laughs> character. Oh, <laughs> like, I just don't definitely. think that it's your story, girl. It's not doing anybody any, <laughs> any favors. Very uncomfortable. So I I get very uncomfortable anytime Dobby comes up, sure. and so I'm like, we could just not. He's my least favorite character. Cut yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Just I, I like even knowing all that, I still feel bad not pulling for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he does serve as. I mean, he serves so much as a Deus Ex Machina in this very scene. He's just like I heard. This is what I'm saying. Though this is this is how felt how self magic right? Like they they were designed by nature to be the deus ex machina because they're the nature of their magic mm. just allows them to 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 do things that simply are not possible interesting mm-hmm. okay i'll allow it like you, you know they can apparate in hogwarts he can apparate into the fucking room of requirement like yeah. just directly into it a room he shouldn't even be able to find <laughs> well but he's the one who found it originally right like the the house elves just know where it is it's just on the map for them <laughs> it's on the map yeah uh Okay, so Umbridge is coming. They all run, and um, it's very stressful for a couple lines. Um, Harry's like desperate. He's like, I just got to get to the bathroom. I can pretend I've been shitting my (laughs) brains out all evening. (laughs) I love that. But Draco gets him, and I know that this isn't what happens, but I imagine it like, um, what's what's that weapon where it's like two rocks and a string, and you like throw it, and you get their ankles? Like... It can't be Bolero. Like, like right? it's like a bolo, right? Like a bolo. Yeah, bolero is a kind of tie. No, right? that's also a bolo tie. Yeah, it's a bolo tie. 
what the fuck is a bowl euro? <laughs> is it just where I go I bowling? Know. I don't know. <laughs> Watch it be just where I go bowling. I think it is called bolero. Okay, cool. So I Google this thing. It's called a bolo weapon. Weapon. Yeah. So that's what I imagine Draco getting hairy with a little. Little tripping jinx. A bolero is like a piece of classical music. Hmm. <clears throat> Interesting. It's what a bunch of figure skaters dance to is like their their song. Oh, okay. You would That's absolutely stupid. if you if you listen to it, you'd absolutely recognize it. This is okay. like coming to me in real time. Okay. Okay. I'll put a clip here. I think it's like a something. Like, the word means something else. I just don't know what it is. That's okay. I was talking about Bolo. So, yeah, Harry Harry gets tripped on the way to, to pretend to shit his guts out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If he actually, actually did have to poop, that would not have been a fun thing to happen. To him. <laughs> <laughs> He's just flying through the air, actively <laughs> shitting himself. <laughs> it does say that he, like, I don't know, he, like... um <laughs> Like wh- he lands and then like skids six feet or something. I'm <laughs> like, a very damn. Specific description. It was very specific. <laughs> uh, he goes down. So then Umbridge takes Harry up to Dumbledore's office, and we- you know we've been there before. There's a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Cornelius fucking Fudge, Kingsley Shacklebolt, and Percy Weasley, and-, and Dollish. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Dollish, whatever. Whose first name I don't know, or maybe yeah. last name. Um. Okay, I'm gonna Google it. It's probably something sinister sounding. Yep. <sighs> John. No, that's not right. <laughs> <good. laughs> there would never be a name like that in Harry Potter. <laughs> Jim no, Bob Dollish. No way. It is John. It's John it is Dollish. John. Yeah, it is John. Jesus. I I thought I was joking. <laughs> yeah, this is that's how you know Percy Weasley was gonna be the shithead is because his name's Percy. The rest of them are like, Fred, uh, George, Bill, Charlie, Percy. Percy. Although yep. Percy Jackson, pretty cool guy. <laughs> True. Cornelius fucking Fudge, whom my hatred for Fudge and Umbridge, I think, is like the same hatred. Yeah. Fudge just isn't there, and Umbridge is there. And she, she, he's more stupid, so it's easier to like look down on him. But Umbridge is like so vindictive about it. And like, she's at every turn, she's unstoppable. So I hate her more, but they, Give, they get, take the same hatred, the mm-hmm. same kind of hatred. Every time we elect a new president in this country, I hate Cornelius Fudge more. Just like, oh yeah, that's good. You know, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, he's like, he's like the big, you know, ministry guy. Like, what's what's so terribly wrong with him? And now, like, every time we have a new person in office, I'm just like, I feel abandoned by my government, and I know how Harry Potter felt because mm-hmm. his president was. Worthless. Was Less than pretty, worthless. They really fudged that one up. Yeah. He doesn't do anything important. He yeah, just he's leads just like a, witch a hunts. really annoying roadblock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he sucks. F- Fudge asks if Harry knows why he's here. Dumbledore Harry's like, yeah, and, but then Dumbledore question. like says no, and then he like shakes his head, and then Harry's like, uh no. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's Not funny to me you know. that Harry can be so unobservant every other time, but now he's know, like yeah. reading these like really tiny cues. Dude, exactly. If I was in a situation like this, I would be shaking and like my heart, <laughs> my like brain would be racing and I would yeah. definitely not be noticing like very minuscule <laughs> body language like this. Certainly not. At least I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. If they called yeah. you to the principal's office because you were messed up at school and the president was there, I think I would also be <laughs> missing myself. <laughs> Wow, what context? Like, can you imagine walking into the principal's office at high school? It's like, hi, I'm Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God, what did I do? I'm old. George Bush was president when I was in high school. <laughs> no, same. <laughs> the W one. Mm-hmm. He was in He was in high school, or he was in office when we started high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Obama was elected in 08. Yeah, you're right. So, so I was... 25% of my high yeah. school. They're 75% of Grace and I's. See, that's why I'm saying I'm old. It do- yeah. doesn't feel like <laughs> he wasn't my high school president. I will be 30 years old in like t- like 15 days. Aw. I'm so sorry to hear Slightly that. Slightly more no, than I'm that. Just no, it's fine. It's great it's over here. Yeah, like, it yeah. feels great. The water's fine. Yeah. 
jump on in. We'll see. My back hurts enough for 29. <laughs> All right. Well, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do like laying down on the floor stretches? I no. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I you should lay down on the floor sometimes. Back. I do lay down on the floor sometimes. It's good for you. Yeah. yeah. You can feel everything best. like stretching out and you're like, ah. It's the best. <laughs> my favorite is to put my legs, put my butt like right in the corner, put my legs up on a wall. That's a good. Oh, that's definitely. a good stretch. That's, that's a, a good, good stretch. That's a good stretch to do right before bed. I've heard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Maybe from you. <laughs> May, I don't know. Maybe. It's my favorite stretch. You know who does not deserve to have those feelings is Dolores Embridge. She's yep. the worst. The worst. Um, <laughs> don't stretch, bitch. Yeah, she does not deserve <laughs> to have a satisfying moment. To stretch. Um, <laughs> okay, so Harry's like feigning like he's not aware of having broken any rules. <laughs> um. Okay, listen. Everything's happening right now. So Umbridge brings... This is like... This is so much of what I would remember about this book after reading it, you know? Yeah. Okay, so Umbridge brings in her informant. It's Cho's friend, Marietta. Not like I like any portrayal of Cho, but I do think they do her dirty in the movies by just being like, she's a tattletale, so yeah. don't we, we don't again. have the budget for another character, so... Yeah. I mean, we certainly don't have the personality to share with another character. <laughs> no. Marietta literally does have a personality in the book because she said something cunty, like, two chapters ago, and so, like, she's got a personality. <laughs> Okay, so Marietta is hiding her face because <laughs> on her face, there's like a bunch of little pimples that spell the word sneak. And Cornelius Fudge catches sight of this on like a 15-year-old girl's face and is like, what does he say? He's, is he like, good God? Or like, literally it? almost falls into the fire. <laughs> yeah, like, he almost dies. <laughs> almost dies. I'm going to find exactly what he said. Y'all ever seen a high school kid so ugly you died? <laughs> <laughs> It's like he like no under no circumstances should anyone ever look at a teenage girl who's already in a moment of stress and react in this way. Okay, and faint. He it's said, awful. He, he doesn't say anything, but he leaps backwards in shock, nearly landing in the fire and cursed, and sets himself on fire a little bit. A little bit on fire, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he says galloping gargoyles. That's what it is. <laughs> Galloping gargoyles. A great right exclamation. Face. Wow. Yeah, it's terrible. Okay. Uh, sorry, I never have my book out during recording because it's 870 pages long. I don't have room for that on my desk. Jesus Christ. Sorry. I'm so excited to read the next book. It's much shorter. It's much shorter. So let's talk about Marietta. Ethan, what's your take on Marietta snitching and then Hermione cursed the, the sign-up sheet to make it say sneak across your forehead and pimples. I mean, that's an Im- impressive piece of magic from a 15 year old, witch. just like Pretty every impressive. now and then we get a little bit of, of the Hermione sauce, the, what, what makes her like a, who she is. Yeah. And, and I, just, I think this is another Slytherin move too. It's yeah. so good. Like every it's time, really good. every time she gets an opportunity to just be the absolute bitch in the room, she's like, I got it. We good. We handled it. What do you think? Grace? It's tough because, I mean, I understand wanting, like, consequences for, like, being a narc. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure these, um, like, you know, they scar and they're, like, on her face forever. I think there is a mention of it being there in a later book. Yeah. So that is tough. Um, (laughs) I feel like there could have been a different method. I I understand what she was doing, and I think it is impressive magic, especially because Umbridge can't come up with, like, a counter curse for it. But Mm -hmm. I do feel perhaps it's a little extreme. Definitely. It's extreme. I think, um, yeah, I was asking about this in our Discord. Let me see what a couple people said. Yeah, what's the Discord consensus? Ashley said, "Don't maybe don't take the scarred forehead route. Okay, Ashley, yes. Andrew, who... Only goes into the Discord server once every 90 days. And today was the day. <laughs> um, Andrew says, my main problem is with the consent of the person joining the club. If they aren't aware of the punishment, they can't agree to the contract. Mm. If Hermione had mentioned dire consequences for breaking the secrecy, I'd be on board. But it seems uncharacteristic and extreme for her, her, extreme for Hermione to do. I kind of disagree with the uncharacteristic part. But, yeah. but it extreme, is extreme, yes. 
But then Claire says, did they not know they were joining a secret society when they joined the secret society? First rule of Fight Club. I don't think scarring them is the right punishment, but it's protecting themselves. So there's a lot of differing opinions well, about this. So to, not to necessarily defend Hermione here, more just to kind of point out, like she has definitely more so than anybody in this in this book treated the situation of Umbridge like a threat mm -hmm. in a way that like the rest of them didn't. Like, I don't even think Harry really thought the DA was that important at first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Hermione definitely had this this inkling that, like, they were going to start sending paramilitary death squads to Hogwarts to take out, to take out like, you know, probably muggles, honestly. Probably muggle-born children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think is something that they, the, the author does maybe almost a decent job sometimes of, like. Okay. It's okay to say that. Well, because, and, and the thing is, like, I'm, I'm saying that because, like, I don't even know if it's. 100% true. I'm just sort of sneaking back through the catalog in my mind, but like of always putting her money in this place of like being aware of mm -hmm. where her status as a muggle-born places her. You could just stop at aware. Hermione's just like so Sh aware. Sure. But like if, if if it's to the point where Harry notices it, then you know it's like it's definitely rubbing off of like she understands what certain people think of her as mm -hmm. a muggle-born witch. And is is constantly, you know, putting herself in a position, taking steps to protect her status as as a witch and protect her safety. Yeah. And I don't think that necessarily excuses what she did to Marietta, but it does like it does sort of inform that decision for me a lot. Mm -hmm. Is that like from the jump, she was like, this is the most important thing. I mean, it is life or death. Yeah, Ashley said when the stakes are uh, when the stakes are this high, it's crucial to know who you can trust. Yeah. Um, and then also Ashley reminded us that, um, and I think the movies imply this that um, with Umbridge, there. I mean, at some point she's definitely dosing kids on Veritas serum. So like, yes. this person oh, yeah. could have been forced to confess this uh, unwillingly, and like they still would have gotten this same punishment. That seems fucked up. Yeah, that's true. That's no good. I'd and I think it, maybe it's in the movie or something. Maybe it's in the book. I don't know. But I think Hermione even like reacted incredulously to the idea that that Umbridge would essentially, you know, poison students. Yeah, I think Hermione still has like, well, maybe not. She's not here for the scene, but I think Hermione for a while still is like the government has to put certain limitations on the people who work for it, but it's like, they don't, they do not. Right. Yeah. Do like that. I don't think anybody expected Umbridge to start coming in and committing war crimes. Like, right. right. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So Marietta is like in a couple of seconds, she's going to get her mem memory wiped. But when she first walks in here, she's like hiding her face and not talking. Do you think she's just like, so anxious and embarrassed? Or do you think like, some I, I think she's something to literally replace. scared to say one more thing because she doesn't want anything else to happen to her. I don't think she knows like the extent hmm. of the curse. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. Like it could get worse. Yeah. Like it could get worse. It does oh paint a, a, an alarming portrait of Hermione as like a torturer almost. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know. Marietta, I've never thought about it that okay? way before. Marietta had no emotional connection to this group of people and her parents work for the ministry. Yeah, like, I know. This is really I kind of feel treatment. bad for her, to be honest, because she was like dragged there. Like, like she I, just dragged I, her I, there. Did her parents not end up dead? Like, uh, I don't remember. Or is that? that no, that's um, I'm thinking of the other one. Uh, Susan Bones, the first person oh, who's sorted oh. at the beginning of uh, or the second oh. person. But yeah, because she's the one that's like, you could produce a corporeal Patronus. <laughs> <laughs> that that one, her Amelia Bones ends up dead. Stop hearing about the corporeal Patronus. <laughs> corporeal Patronus. Okay, so Umbridge it says like one of her people overheard Harry's original meeting in the Hogshead, um, where he he was quote trying to persuade students to to join an illegal society. Dumbledore. You know, this is fun. It becomes fun as soon as Dumbledore starts talking. Yeah. Because here's the thing with Dumbledore. Dumbledore is in control of every single situation he was he's in in the entire series. He for better or for worse, for sure. Like sometimes for sure for worse, but like he is 100% in control of everything that <laughs> happens to him. And if you go into life with that kind of like audacity of being like I'm in control of every single thing that happens to me, that's how you get confidence, baby. They yeah. Wow, that's he, the secret. He, they cannot touch him and he knows it. Yeah. 
So Dumbledore, sorry, I'm pouring more wine, but You're it can good. be ambient background noise. Yeah, there you go. There's more wine. <laughs> what, uh, what vintage are you partaking in? Oh, this in? is, um, what are you? It's just a CA, which is for California. It's California Dream, Cab Sav. It's probably like $10 at Kroger. You know Love what it. I mean? That's about where I'm at right now. Um, okay, so Dumbledore points out that the society at the time of its forming was not illegal. That's fun. That's just yeah. good banter. I, I it is, it. and I love that. And this is the one moment, though, where I almost feel bad for, not not feel bad for Fudge, but where I could kind of, like, put myself in Fudge's shoes. Because I've had too many of this damn conversation in my life where you just got to look at him and be like, clearly that's not what we're talking about here. Right. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, we know it wasn't illegal then. We but know we put the rule in place. You know we put the rule in place. Yeah. Precision of language is everything in these kinds of situations. Absolutely. But you could just feel him sitting there like, are you kidding <laughs> me? So Dumbledore asks for evidence that the meetings have been carrying on since that first meeting, which was not illegal. Right. Okay. And then Harry is like, Kingsley whispered something and something shooted past me. Well, that probably is nothing. <laughs> 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 nothing when i just said shoot it i was reminded about how in my immortal there is like one point where like all of the dialogue tags are shooted no no <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny oh and then God. sometimes the guns are shooting too um yeah okay so umbridge starts to question marietta um as the evidence which that's not what evidence is but okay <laughs> right I eyewitness account is notoriously unreliable. Yeah. Okay, but Marietta is just like uh, staring at her. Okay, wait. I literally wrote this in my notes. I told you I'm Anchorman and I can't not read my notes. My <laughs> notes say, except Marietta starting her with negatives and confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote huh. that down. I wonder what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but... She, Marietta's acting like she doesn't know what, what's happening because guess what? Marietta does not know what's happening. Her memory <laughs> has been erased. Another war crime. Yeah, yeah like seriously. does anyone, does anyone come like check on Marietta in a couple days to make sure she's doing okay? I don't think so. I, there has <laughs> to be. Me. There's always a fucking <laughs> follow up so. scene. There is always a hospital wing follow up scene where uh, Harry is eavesdropping on the hospital wing. And it's like, so and so will make a full recovery. But she like, won't. It, it, she won't make a full recovery. But like, there has to be a scene like that. I, I cannot be. There could. This cannot be the one time where they don't. Harry doesn't go eavesdrop at the hospital to check <laughs> on. Because like Ron breaks his dick or something. I don't know. <laughs> Ron's spotted dick. That's a real thing. Like, no, that's a real thing from this podcast. That's a joke we made on this podcast like two and a half years ago. Yikes. Because spotted dick is a food. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we were doing a soup salad sandwich, oh, right. which is my favorite game of all time with the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. Okay. That was very fun. Ron sexy freckled dick soup. Is that on the Patreon? It was on the Patreon, but it's on the main feed now because mm. I'm nice. But if you want more funny episodes like that, join our Patreon for a little bit. Woo! <laughs> Patreon! Well, the main thing about our Patreon is that we donate all of our net profits to um, Camp Lavender, which is a summer camp. Um, no, Camp Lilac. I'm sorry. Not Cap Camp Lavender Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? Camp Lilac, which is a camp for um, trans and gender nonconforming kids. And it's a good, safe space. Incredible. So. Thank yeah. you so much. I think that's important context it for our Patreon. It is in important incredible. context. Um, and we have fun bonus episodes over there. Anyway, okay. Umbridge is so mad that she starts shaking Marietta bodily. I truly feel really bad for Marietta. She's well, here's, struggling. She, the two people who react really negatively at this are Kingsley Shacklebolt and Albus Dumbledore, the very last two people that I would want to get mad at me in the world, I think, yeah. because they're so scary and nice and you just want their lives to be easy. Not like Dumbledore is nice, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You don't want him mad at you. Definitely not. Yeah, Kingsley is definitely the the embodiment of that like beware the anger of a patient man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. thing where it's like 
if Kingsley Shacklebolt was coming against me, I would be scared. Yeah, for sure. So when he's there and he's on our side, he's a very reassuring presence. I like him as a character, and I wish he had more character, but definitely what we get of Kingsley is very fun. Umbridge produces this list of attendees from the DA. Okay, Hermione. Okay, Hermione. <sighs> I'm sorry. Hermione, why? 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 Like, if you had to write them all down, and if you had to make the thing that that is writing them all down, if you had to make that thing into a curse, what you you also just cannot leave that anywhere. Like she, if she she does this to Marietta, and then she fucking lets the list get away from her. And like she couldn't has she zero have like charmed it to have the names disappear or anything? Right. Some mar- some Marauders map shit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're telling me that there was there was magic that thirteen year old. Revis Lupin and 13-year-old fucking Sirius Black and James Potter and Peter Pettigrew could do that 15-year-old Hermione Granger cannot do. Horse I don't buy it. shit. She can make the names disappear until she needs to read them. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason. There's, there's no just reason. no reason. For starters, there's no reason for that list to have been at this meeting. Does she take roll call? Why are you doing that? I she think she, she like cabinet. nailed it to the wall, right? Like... Yeah. Oh, Didn't she? is that real? I, I think so. Maybe, maybe that's just a movie thing or maybe it's something mm. I'm making up entirely. I swear I to think, God, she goes. I think that might be a movie memory. She goes in the in the room requirement at some point and nails the thing to the wall. Like I used to look little stuff up like this, but yeah. we would never finish these episodes. Um, if I fact checked everything, we just have to guess. But like, what, so what's the opposite of a deus ex, ex machina then? Like a plot hole? Is that just deus what we call ex it? Deus ex media. Yeah. No. <laughs> Because that's yeah, what this is, right? It's a, right. it's a, it's a Deus Ex Machina, but like negative, right? It's a the list. You mean? Yes, it's a, it's yeah. a. This doesn't make sense, but we need to shove you into some drama right now. Like, yeah, we need a reason for Albus Dumbledore to leave Hogwarts. I guess it's not not a Chekhov's gun. It's like we saw the list. The list was sitting there, and then it was shot. <laughs> <laughs> the list went off. It shooted. It shooted. Okay, um, so don't shake Marietta. Okay, <laughs> she has oh. enough brain damage already for the evening. Oh my God. Um, her memory was taken from her. Surely that produces brain damage. I don't believe it wouldn't. I, I mean, to. we see evidence of that earlier in this book. You're completely right about with, that. With Lockhart. Mm-hmm. Lockhart. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. He's so in like the that. memory spells ward. Yeah. Damn. That's Well, in Bert, um, Bertha Jorkins, right? They, when, um, Pettigrew and Voldemort are like talking about yeah. how they like they like broke through all of her memory charms so much that she like was they like they were like we had to murder her because yeah. she broke. Yeah. It's fucked. Okay, so the list it's labeled Dumbledore's Army and it has a bunch of students' names on it. And Dumbledore smiling offers to confess, and like, uh, oh, that's so dramatic and fun. <laughs> Every all of the next moves he makes are so dramatic and fun. Yeah, I mean you're right about him being in control of every situation. Like if he's not, he makes himself in control of every situation. Absolutely. He's like, I'll knock your asses out. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> like, it's I- not a problem. <laughs> yeah, I got this. He's very op, and we only get to see it every once in a while. And we only, I do you guys remember that there's that chapter at the end of this book called "The Only One He Ever Feared," and that's like a very dramatic. Dumbledore chapter, and I think that is supposed to like really drive home along with this, like truly how powerful that man is. Yeah. Good or bad, you gotta admit he's powerful. Yep. So he is he openly admits to trying to like intentionally start this army, and Harry stupid Potter is like, No, you can't lie to them like this. <laughs> and every everyone in the room is like, Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Like, shut up. <laughs> Uh, this right. This is the same James Potter that figured out how to become an animagus. No way. Like he, he Harry was born from from clearly his father alone. I don't know. And the kid's so stupid. <laughs> He's so dumb. His mother was a genius, right? Yeah, I think Lily was supposed to be very smart. Yeah. At least that's how Slughorn presents her. Mm-hmm. Um, but Harry is. Like not he like he's obviously dumb, but it's really just like it's like an emptiness. He's like truly a shell of a character. If yeah. he was if he was hot, he would be a himbo. But like, 
oh, he's just so not even hot yeah. enough to be a himbo. That That's was Cedric Diggory. It, literally at no point <laughs> it is, is anybody in the Harry Potter story like, wow, Harry's kind of attractive. <laughs> That's true. Well, I've even said that I, I never had a crush on any of these characters. No. I didn't either. When I was their age. Yeah, no. Well, because like they're, are, the Golden Trio are all described as just being like scruffy fucking morons. <laughs> Scruff- like, like there's nothing appealing about Ron Weasley for the first at least <laughs> Four novels. He's not. He's literally not appealing at all until he comes back from running away in Deathly Hallows, yeah. and you're like, "You came back. That's the first good yeah. thing you've ever done. Oh Keep God. it up." And Yikes. then Harry is obviously Harry, and God, the way that that she chose to describe Hermione in the first book is just Ooh. brutal. Yeah. It's just unfair <laughs> to to, yeah. to young girls. Yeah, for sure. Especially the kind who you know said a lot of annoying things all the time. <laughs> Not that I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> Fucking Percy Weasley is like eagerly writing this all down <laughs> to send it immediately to the Daily Prophet. Like, make it a ever mess. To punch somebody in the face more. Literally, like he's got ink everywhere. Like, dude, get it together. <laughs> there Chill out. is never a single moment in this book series where I enjoy the presence of Percy Weasley. It's true. Like the whole rest of that family, I you know Fred and George. I would die for Bill and Charlie. Yeah. I would die for Arthur and Molly. I would die for fucking Percy. I wouldn't die for him, but I do enjoy him in chamber of secrets where he making out with his girlfriend is a red herring for like oh, this very dramatic yeah. monster plot. With That's Penelope really fun. Clearwater. <laughs> That's really fun. But every moment after that, he's just Terrible. like a nightmare burden character. What must Penelope Clearwater be like to date? I that know. Man? Well, and I think he dumped her. <laughs> like that's a low. That's gonna be a when low. When he point. goes to become Cornelius Fudge's fucking like assistant, he gets promoted after the Triwizard Tournament fiasco when his boss died. Whew. And he goes to be Fudge's assistant, and he's just insufferable. He's very happy about it. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. Fug. 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 <laughs> fug. <and Fudge>. fug. <laughs> <laughs> but in a fudge he wants to apprehend Dumbledore but um, Dumbledore quote thought we might hit that little snag and now they're flirting yep <laughs> <laughs> so this is the moment where I feel it important to explain this at the office that I work at we play a game where we try to put Benoit Blanc from the, the Knives Out movies into other characters okay He's truly one of the most fun cinema characters of, like, my whole life. I enjoy his character so much. There are several characters that you do not need to change a word of the dialogue to make him Benoit Blanc. And Albus Dumbledore is one of those characters. <laughs> I love that. How you get... right about that? Now, Minister, you seem to be laboring under the delusion that I'm going to, <laughs> what was the phrase, uh, come quietly it just like it it you do not need to change a single word of the dialogue. Dumbledore is like this and Captain Barbosa from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies mm-hmm. is like this. Like there's a couple of them that like they just already speak in Benoit Blanc just without the accent. I love a southern accent. It's just, they're just the best. What up Ashley? How you doing? Hey Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> southern accents are so fun. But, you know, you got to have the right person definitely yeah. behind that Southern accent. Definitely. <laughs> I, you know, Grace and I came from the same place, right? We, mm. We're from the hill country. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And there, there is that person living inside of me just waiting to burst out. And that is <laughs> mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. least lovely form of Southern accent where I just sound like <laughs> the bumpkiniest bumpkin that has ever bumped. <laughs> I hope to hear that someday. That sounds... Truly delightful. It's that it, the, inside <laughs> me. There are two wolves, and one is that, and one is is my father being from New York. Mm. <laughs> like, like what a combo. grew up in Queens in the fifties. Like th- that accent is also buried deep inside <laughs> of me. And every now and then, I'll just be like, "Hey, just take the dog out." <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> That's fun. What did you just say to me? <laughs> like I said, just take the dog out. <laughs> can you take the? Sorry, can you take the dog out? Like it just. <laughs> Please. My fiance will look at me like, what? <laughs> what are you speaking? So there's that. Yeah, that That is 
But Benoit Blanc is truly a delight. <laughs> one of the greatest characters to ever grace the silver silver screen. I would, yeah, I agree. I would watch a million of those. You could put a new Benoit Blanc movie out every month, and I would never get tired of it. The, that's Daniel Craig, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I I just like didn't buy him as James, James Bond. I don't buy James Bond as a character or a franchise. It's just like not I'm not for me, sure. not the intended audience. Sure. And I I was very anti I was very anti Daniel Craig until I saw the knives out and I was like, oh yeah. I agree. No, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the biggest left turn that an actor's maybe ever it's taken. It's wonderful. Right? Yeah, like, it's, it's a really a great move. move. It was such a good move. It's like, how how yeah. can you be... Not only is he James Bond, he's the guy that played James Bond the longest. Right? Mm-hmm. Cool. How can you be that guy and then turn around and create a character that is more iconic? I know, right? Yeah, okay, exactly. So... He's but, very, yeah, so I, I appreciate him. Okay, anyway, this is not. Yeah, before we got to those Daniel Dumbledore Graham lines, podcast. I just had to, I had to inform your listening audience that yeah, you can read any that. Albus Dumbledore line in a Benoit Blanc voice and it makes it so good. That's like, they say that Shakespearean English is best read in a Southern American accent. Absolutely, it is, mm-hmm. yes. Because the cadence is like more similar to like its intended cadence and like, you know, some parts of Harry Potter are too, you know? Yeah. Okay, so Fudge tries to like get at Dumbledore, but there's a flash of light, and suddenly all the bad guys are unconscious, and they are all bad. No, I was gonna say they're all bad guys, but there is Umbridge. Can't forget. Um, did Dumbledore knock out Marietta too? No, McGonagall. No. Oh yeah, because got her. they're like, because she still is just like not. She's just like floating. She's in that twilight state her. where her memories haven't reformed yet. Yeah, she's gonna wake up tomorrow and be like, I had the weirdest dream. Yeah, <laughs> she's gonna wake up tomorrow and be like, it is. May or June. (laughs) The months have passed me by. (laughs) The squally April is gone. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, are you implying that she, they wipe I'm implying that she's sitting in a chair and the camera is going around her (laughs) and the months are passing by. (laughs) She wakes up at the end of like a month later from this coma that McGonagall's about to put her in. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Everyone's unconscious. Dumbledore's like, you have to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. When they get up, you have to act like you only just got knocked down. We all just got knocked down. I disappeared. Okay, we're not having this conversation right now. Harry, do your occlumency. You must. There's a reason. Close your mind. Uh, and uh, and I will tell you the reason later. And it's like, for the love of God. Just tell him. Just tell. be like, he could be lying. Like, he in your brain. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like so quick. Like, why uh, not say it? So annoying. That's what I was talking about earlier. Like, this whole book could have been solved if Dumbledore was like, hey, there's a prophecy yeah. about you and Voldemort in the Hall of Mysteries at the room requirement. Cut Voldemort it wants book. it. He's going to try to break in. He needs you to touch it because you are the only one that still has the mm-hmm. blood in you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's going to trick your and ass. And he's going to trick your ass. Solves the conversation. You know, hey, Harry, you know how he said Dementors after you to your house in, in like, the other part of, in in actual England instead of in Scotland Muggle where you go to school. Like, why don't you uh yeah, let's just let's just hey, Voldemort's gonna lie to your brain, okay? And it's gonna look like you're a snake. You're gonna think you're a snake. Uh especially once Arthur gets bit and Dumbledore's still just like not the time. Yeah, yeah. it's very infuriating. Um communicate things to children. That's all I have to say. Yes. Communicate things to children. They deserve to understand. The one thing I think this book does extremely well is that feeling that you get from Harry of like, no one will talk to me. No one will tell me what's going on. No one will listen to me. I feel lost. You know, like she, I think does a very good job of putting you in Harry's place in his like feelings at the expense of like, it is a very uncomfortable book to read. It is, it is rough. Like you feel that angst more than you want to. Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is one of those moments where like Harry is like, I can't you won't talk to me about it, but I cannot do these clemency lessons like mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah, get it. He, like, he like doesn't even slightly succeed at all. No, <laughs> at clemency. No. like it's a nightmare the whole time. So like just give him the information he needs. Whatever, dude. It would be Heart motivational for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Voldemort's going to lie inside your brain. Look out no. for that. Look out for uh, that. Anyway, I have something to tell you later. I gotta go now. Kay, love you. And then he disappears. <laughs> <laughs> but in a cool way. 
<laughs> yeah, it is in a cool way, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's in a pretty cool way. Especially in the movie, man. This is one where I do think the movie really did this scene justice. Like... Yeah, it's good. Made a necessary, just kind of dialogue change just to not have to play this whole thing out as long as it plays out in the book. Yeah. And for Dumbledore to just vanish. And for Kingsley Shackable to be like, you got to admit, Minister, Dumbledore's got style. Yeah. In the book, it's fucking Phineas Nigelus who says <laughs> yeah. that. I love that, though. In the movie, they make it Kingsley because Phineas Nigelus isn't a character. Not a thing. I always forget that he's not in the movies. That's so wild. I feel like giving that line to Kingsley is, you know, like, what would the black guy say? You know, <laughs> yeah. a little bit. But it's a good line. He does have style. That's undeniable. Ethan, that's the end of the chapter. Do you have any, like, final thoughts? Or do you want to go back and say anything again or for the first time? No, I don't think so. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a great chapter. I just love anytime we get to see Dumbledore being Dumbledore, like... Yeah, he's a fun character. This is honestly the one thing I liked about the Fantastic Beast movies is that like you get to see Dumbledore be like an adult who can do magic instead of like this OP'd wizard man. Right. Yeah. But like you get to see sort of where it comes from, but it's like it's a cool time anytime you get to see the adults do magic cuz they're just like actually good at it. Yeah, McGonagall's my favorite. McGonagall yeah. and Snape are both fun to watch like yeah. get mad and do shit. Absolutely. So, yeah, I love anytime you get to see Dumbledore, like, just be Albus Dumbledore, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's so fun for me. And I love to see Umbridge get any taste of her own bullshit, right? Any mm -hmm. moment where she is defeated is a good one. Um, yeah, for this is sure. A, this is a great chapter. I don't know why it – I don't know why there's a centaur involved. I think she literally wrote the centaur and the sneak and, yep. like, held herself to that chapter title. I think this happens in the books a lot of the time, actually – where it feels like she came up with a chapter title and said, fuck, I have to write a chapter about that. Yeah, that tr <laughs> definitely tracks, especially with these like uh, mm, alliterative ones. Yeah. Yeah. Because you could have just called it the sneak and then not done the subplot with her ends at all. At all. He didn't even <laughs> yeah. need to be in the book. If Harry never went to another fucking divination lesson, I would not have noticed. Yeah, for sure. Like, we're mentally done with that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't need that anymore. We checked out with Hermione in book three. <laughs> for sure. That's true. <laughs> not to, you know, not to hold anything against Sybil Trelawney. I think she's a delightful character. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, I mean, she ends up being played by Emma Thompson, who's just... Iconic. Just I do love iconic, Emma Thompson. Just yeah. a phenomenal actor giving way too much to, like, what is a pretty dumb e role. Yeah, you're right. I totally agree with that. Same with Snape, though, if you, if and Alan Rickman, if you ask Oh, me. yeah. I mean, Alan Rickman carried that that part. Yeah. Like, I think people like Snape more than they should because of Alan Rickman. Definitely. I think that's totally true. Can't hold it against well, him. And He's I mean, just so naturally charming. You can even tell, like, which books were written after he took over as Severus Snape. It's right? like, what if he was a good guy? Like, all of a sudden, <laughs> Five comes out and Snape has, like, depth and, like... A backstory and like thought, <sighs> and you know he was one more character he, I don't want to waste time with. Is Snape? I enjoy Snape, but there's just like so much bullshit about his character. Yeah, the the pensive memories are something else, man. For for him. Yeah, we have our friend Radio Mike from Harry Potter and the Boys coming on for that episode because he goes back at Harry goes back in time and he's singing out with the boys, so it's kind of like Harry Incredible. Potter and the Boys, which is the Perfect. name of his podcast. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> That's going to be a real fun one. I love that so much. But I, I also just love the idea of Snape having to, like, pull the memories out of the kid's dad out of him so that he can do his job. Like, yeah. it, it gives you a real insight into that, like, your teachers are not, you know, just vampires that live at the school. <laughs> right. Like, Snape's the teacher you'd run into at the bar. A hundred percent. I, <laughs> uh, I would definitely pretend I didn't see him. <laughs> At the bar? For sure. No, well, he wouldn't be able to see you through his, like, greasy curtain bangs anyway, so. Ooh, bangs <laughs> are very, bangs actually get greasy before the rest of your hair grease. Yeah, because they're you know sitting that? on your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the reason I'm growing them out is I'm sick of showering so often. The amount of which Severus Snape's hair grease gets discussed throughout this book series is. It's and his lot. nose grease. Don't forget his nose grease. Astronomical. <laughs> yeah. Grace. Yeah. At the end of this chapter. Chapter 27, The Centaur and the Sneak. Do you have any last thoughts? Oh, no, no, no. 
No, 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 no. I don't. Okay, I did. Great. I enjoyed the chapter. I was. Yeah, it was fun. good to like have something happen. Yeah, that's yeah, the end so of my sentence. We could we could have cut the centaur. The sneak part. Yeah, is fun. but I it was exciting. I definitely just end. read this as like I opened up my audiobook and and just listened to this chapter. I feel like I need to put that on my little guest guide. Is like I don't expect you to read the rest of the book. <laughs> read out so, to this, but like, I definitely don't. like. I I know this book well enough that like I could get the yeah. context around it, but I cannot remember like what directly precedes this event at mm-hmm. all. Like mm-hmm. it's not much. Um, yeah. The last chapter was seen and unforeseen, which like Harry was doing occlumency, and then it's the chapter where Umbridge kicks Trelawney out, and Dumbledore yes, is like, okay. "No, I found a replacement, and it's this centaur and the sneak." <laughs> it's just you know she has to write it like that because that's what Dumbledore would have said. Yeah, he's definitely coming into his like big dramatic wizard energy here at the end of the book. Absolutely. Which I'm <laughs> I know there's still 10 chapters left, but I swear to god we're at the end of this book. Like <laughs> I we have to we have to wrap Except it up. you have the entire plot of the book that happens after this. Uh, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. It's going to be great. We have a lot of fun guests lined up. We're going to talk about it very quickly. You have the G word coming up. What grop? Grop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is, is there a slur in this that starts with G? <laughs> no, just mud blood. Mud blood. Okay, let's move on to plugs. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Ethan, what do you got going on, Lily? What do you want to plug? Where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on. Don't look at my Twitter. Stop. Stop using Twitter. But whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I hate Twitter mm-hmm. now. Okay. Uh, so find me on Instagram at Edgehill Photos. I post pictures of my dog sometimes, and that's my last name is e- Ethan Edgehill. E D G H I L L. There's one mm. E in that last yeah. name. I had um, to have that pointed out to me by Mary Clay after the first time you came on my podcast. Yeah, it's fine. Literally, literally everybody gets it wrong. Uh, I know, but I know how that is, and it just sucks. Sure, I have a lot of friends that still like to get, like go to bat for me about it. I'm just like I that was beat out of me in <laughs> elementary school. Like I just couldn't I care anymore. It. Um, <laughs> good for you. Although anytime we get a Kate and I get a wedding invitation that's uh like addressed to Ethan Edgehill with another E or any other variation, I'm just like, I don't have to go. I'm not invited. <laughs> that's not you. You have to go. I don't have to go. I was not invited because her sister <laughs> spelled my last name wrong on her. Oh no! Invite. And so I was like, Yep, I don't have to go. Not me. But uh, yeah, find me there. You can go to my podcast, uh, Bacon and Eggs and Movie Lawyers podcast, where me and my co-host Tyler Carlin have talked about, like, almost 300 different movies over the course of five and some change years. Wow. How many Harry Potter movies? Uh, Ten. Whoa. Okay. Not That's more than I thought you were going to say. T- <laughs> we covered the the original eight, the okay, OGs, sure. and although we actually only did f- uh, four episodes about those eight movies. Okay. And then we did the first two Fantastic Beasts movies, but not the most recent one. That's probably because it was a fucking dumpster fire. Yeah, they become progressively more dumpster fiery. Oh, yeah, it was it was purely awful. Um, but that's where available. Bacon and Eggs and Movie Lovers podcast available wherever podcasts are sold or given away for free. And <laughs> do they sell those still? <laughs> if you're selling if somebody's selling you a podcast in the year of our Lord 2023, <laughs> um, I have a bridge in Brooklyn that I would love to talk to you about. <laughs> And what's something you've been watching, reading, playing, listening to lately you think the listeners of our podcast would enjoy? Legitimately, in the last like three weeks, I've read the uh, all seven Mistborn books by Brandon Sanderson. Whoa, those are long. And I, well, I listen to the audiobooks. Oh, those audiobooks are long. They too. are, they are also <laughs> yeah, long, they're but long. I can, yeah, I can speed it up so it goes a little oh. faster. Um, was Tyler, is that your first time reading them? Yes. Was Tyler happy? Yeah, I think so. Much I of think, his in my correspondence historically has been about misborn specifically. I think, well, I, I'll be happy to talk to you about it at, at of a later date, but I think I pissed him off a little bit. But yeah, so that's that's the thing I'm going to recommend. I don't even know if I like them, so yeah, I don't know if your listeners you are going to like them. No, I'm with you. <laughs> you know, you remember that line from Parson Rec where Leslie Nope is like, of course you like Harry Potter. You've seen all eight movies. It's yeah. Ex- exactly how I feel about the Mistborn trilogy and then Tetralogy where I'm like, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> at all but i've read that's seven of them about, that's how i feel about marvel kind of period yeah i mean that's completely fair <laughs> she goes the ant-man and the wasp colon quantumania okay it, ant-man is one of the very few characters that i still care about <laughs> it was, hey it was a movie there there were lots of scenes there was some acting uh parts yeah. of it were great 
That's all I ask, um, dude. And I, my husband and I got a, a very nice like movie theater gift card for Christmas, and then we discovered that they do half price Tuesdays. So we're really cruising on that gift. Really, night. just yeah, stretching it for all it's worth. That's incredible. <laughs> uh, so yeah, go see that. Hell yeah, amazing! Thank you for the plug. Yeah, Grace, where can people hear your dulcet tones elsewhere on the internet? Well, first of all, follow Wildling Press at Wildling Press on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, also, listen to Wildling Press's podcast, How Do I Book? It's what it sounds like. It's exactly what it sounds I'm like. going to follow that on Spotify real quick. Just real quick. Um, thank you so much for your support. <laughs> um, and today, I'm going to plug yet another cake recipe. <laughs> hopefully, <Grace. laughs> oh, hopefully cake this cake. is fun and not annoying that I keep doing this. <laughs> It's very fun. Um, okay, but today is going to be a salted caramel banana toffee cake. Uh, wow, Hold that's on. so many things. Hold on. But Sounds it's amazing. a recipe by Creme de la Combe. Um, but yeah, the name says it all. It's got all the good stuff. Just a note, if you do try to make this recipe just like you would when you're making like banana bread or something, you want to use like those sweet, sweet, overripe bananas for the cake. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Pro tip. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. We do love the recipe plugs. <laughs> I've been your host, Christina. You know where to find me. And this week, I plugged this last week. I'm plugging it again this week. I'm plugging Of the Eldest Gods, our cousin show that covers Percy Jackson. Don't we like that franchise better than this one? Yes. They just started Battle of the Labyrinth, and I'm on their episode tomorrow talking about Chapter 3 of Battle of the Labyrinth. We play Tag with Scorpions, so obviously that's a fun one. So please check them out if you like Percy Jackson, or even if you don't, they'll explain it to you. You could just go through. <laughs> you don't even have to read it. If you have it on the reading, they did it for you. <laughs> Ethan, thank you so much for joining us. It has been so fun. Thank you so much for having me. It is always a delight to come to the show and talk about one of these chapters. Hell yeah. And you'll come back for the next book in the next book, I presume. Absolutely. I will come back whenever you ask me to do things. Always. Yay. And Grace, as always, thank you for being a friend. Oh, my gosh. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the end of the episode. Bum, 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 did y'all know that Blanche was supposed to be 47 years old in the Golden what? Girls? Well, it's the haircut, wow. really. <laughs> wow. 47 years old. That's it, potheads. Thanks for listening to the Restricted Section. This podcast is produced and hosted by me, Christina Kahn. Our theme music was produced by Ryan Kahn. Our logo was designed by Michael Hardison. Please connect with us on Twitter at RestrictedPod, on Instagram at RestrictedSectionPod, on Facebook at RestrictedSectionPod, or in our Facebook group, The Restricted Section Detention Crew. Join our Patreon to get access to our Discord server, our bonus episodes, and other cool perks. We're also very happy to be a member of Deus Ex Media, where all you fucking nerds can find all kinds of fandom podcasts to suit your fancy. Coffee. Tea. Honor. Cabbage. Long ago, the four elements lived in harmony. Then, shit went totally cray when the Avatar attacked. Only the Cabbage Man, merchant of fine cruciferous vegetables, could stand against his trolling. But when the world needed some dank veg, he vanished. Ten years have passed, and my partner and I have started a new podcast. My Cabbages! An Avatar podcast. A weekly show about Avatar The Last Airbender. Whether it's Sokka's new line of cologne... Hey... Look at you, sitting there, on a seal. Well, now look it back at me, I'm on an on a even bigger seal. Now look away. D&D related antics. You have to make an acrobatics check for that, and Aang just like, unzips his pants and whips out his d20s. He's just like, I got this. Or randomly breaking into song. <laughs> so go bend in waterfall. We'll stumble our way through the greatest show ever made, one episode at a time. Rotten cabbages? What kind of slum do you think this is? Is that, we're here to do a show? What? Waveforms. Those look like waveforms.
Dave X Media.